Hello, and welcome back to another episode of MITS TV by Bessa San Diego, a mitzvah event specialist association. Make sure that you like and subscribe this video today and leave a comment down below and let us know what else you would like to see on the channel. Now, enjoy the show. Thank you so much for joining us again for another episode of Mitz TV. Today, we are talking food yet again with some of your favorite subjects. So we are going to be joined again by Sushi on a Roll. And today, they're going to teach us how to make an ahi tuna roll. Check it out. How are we all doing there? We're from Kyoto Gifts. We're gonna do some tuna today. We're gonna have some poke, we'll do some tuna sashimi, we'll do some tekmaki. But here's your loin right here, okay? Ahi tuna, yellowfin tuna. So we're gonna take it here, right? If you look at your sides here, it looks like this, right? So we call this the triangle. This is where the bone was at, okay? Little tendons over here, the skin was on this side. Okay, we're gonna take our sashimi knife here. We're gonna take the top off. We call the top loin. This is the best part of this piece versus the belly. We had it. It comes off right there, a little saku block, right? We're going to take one more off here. Take about an inch off. There's a little moisture in there, so you want to put a little uh, paper towel in when you kind of use these out there. Okay, it'll kind of just drain a little bit, so we need your pokey. Okay, then we're going to take these here, kind of block it off. We're going to call these saku blocks now, portions. With a nice sharp knife, long knife, we'll get through all this here. Just take your time. Okay, we're going to go fishing out there. You kind of go right there and bring your tuna, right? So as long as it has a fish head and the tail on it, doesn't mean it's fresh. So be careful when you catch them and eat them up real fast. And there's a tendon right here. So you want to go above that tendon, okay? You don't want that in your sushi, right? Chewy sushi is not good. Then we go below the tendon. Then we're going to scrape that. We'll scrape that later. And that'll be for like your tuna roll, your spicy tuna rolls, okay? You don't want any of the tendons, okay? So that will go for... A scrape, and if there's any tendons here, right, it looks pretty good. So we we'll keep these aside. So we did different choices here. So we go different times of the sushi bar. Who you sit with depends on what piece you get. Okay, so we're gonna do a poke. Let's do pokey with the top loin here. Okay, we'll take this here. We'll take a little bit. Okay, and we'll just do cubes. Pokey means cube. So we're just gonna cut them straight here, and then just cubes. Okay, pretty simple. Then we're going to use a pokey sauce that we've created already. You want to wipe your board, get all that moisture out of the way. We're going to use seaweed salad for the pokey too, okay? A little radish sprout. We'll do avocado. We'll just prep all this. Avocado, we just going to take it right in half. Just cut some slices in there, right? So nice avocado slices, a little fat for the uh, natural fat for your pokey. And then cucumber, okay? So cucumber, Japanese cucumber here we sell at Kyoto as well. We'll cut that right in half. Then go one more half. We're going to chop these up. We'll take our, our dubba here, we'll cut a little piece right there, right in half. We just chop them up real nice. Dices here, okay? Bite size. We'll just go all the way through. The Japanese cucumber has a little less core in there. So we'll put on top of the pokey, okay? And the pokey, what we're going to take is we're going to take our bowl and then rice. So, what we did before, we're going to take a little bit of water, okay? Have our rice here. We just put the rice on the bottom, real simple, nothing too much, too easy, simple, right? Seaweed salad on top, and we just build, right? So you just kind of put whatever you want on top there, right? And we'll take our cucumbers right on top of that, okay? The avocado that we prepped here, we can kind of like fan it out a little bit. Then we put our pokey. So we got another bowl here, we can put the pokey sauce on top. So throw this right on your bowl, about three to four ounces. Put some sesame seeds on top. We take our pokey sauce, right? Just put it right on top. Take a chopstick here, mix that. That's yummy. And we're gonna put it right on top there. So you see your proteins, everything right there, okay? That one got away, still alive there. We'll take our radish sprouts here. Take it out of the box. 
take a nice big chunk here, put it right on top, right? Here's your poke bowl. Simple, easy. With all this other stuff, you can do some sashimi. Let's take this piece here. We'll do a sashimi one with the same seaweed salad, okay? So sashimi, we're gonna cut against the grain here, right? So an X with my blade of my knife and an X with the fish. So nice big strokes here, right? Nice big portion. It's about about an ounce and a half each. That's why sashimi costs a little bit more, right? So you just use the whole knife. So you got that right there, okay? So we'll take another plate. Seaweed salad again. Seaweed salad is pretty versatile. You can use it as we call a support called suma. Okay, that goes right there. You take your radish sprouts. You got a little height, a little one there. We're gonna take a little cucumber. It's just all about garnish, right? It's gotta look good. So we'll go leave these in some angles here. It should open up really nice. So a little garnish, a little crunch. Then your sashimi will go right on top. All right, little wasabi, little ginger right there. Okay, and let's take more of these pieces. Let's do a nigiri and we'll do some tuna rolls. So same piece here, we can kind of do it. So we'll cut it here again, right? So we'll take some pieces here for inside the roll called a tekamaki, hosomaki with the seaweed on the outside, a small roll, the hardest of all rolls to make, right? And let's take a couple of these here before some nigiri. We'll take like four pieces. It's almost like sashimi, but about a little bigger than an ounce. Okay, put the rest aside here. Wipe down our board. Let's do the tekamaki first. Okay, so the tekamaki is the half sheet seaweed. Okay, we're gonna take a little bit of water. We're gonna take the size of like half a golf ball, maybe a golf ball. Let's do golf ball size. We're gonna go right down the center of the seaweed. Right, and we're gonna spread the rice covering the bottom two thirds of the seaweed. Okay, and we're gonna make a little indentation in the center. Then we're gonna use a bamboo mat without the saran wrap, since the seaweed will be on the outside. And we're gonna put these pieces in the middle. Okay, and that little indentation there. Let's go three here. Okay, we're gonna take it to the back end of the mat here. We're gonna lift it up, hold your part and go over the top. And make a square right now, right? Lift it up, go forward once, make your square, forward twice. Then the seam is back here with you, so you gotta go back one. Make a square, okay? Looks like that, hosomaki, like a hose, okay? Go one more, real fast. So rough side up, a little bit of water. So you don't wanna put too much rice in this because it won't close. So less is more in here, it's better. So from left to right, so spread the rice. Again, the bottom two thirds of this, seaweed towards you and then take your tekamaki or tuna ahi or your tekamaki bring it to the back end of the mat lift it up hold your product over the top tuck 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 make your square lift it up forward once make your square twice and then back one make your square you got two of them right so you take that there let's let that sit for a little bit we'll do our nigiri so nigiri is just a little bit of water and the hardest part is make this rice ball stick without falling apart. Not too much water. So you want to just kind of roll it. Flip it over, you roll, and that's about it. So you, when you eat it, it kind of crumbles, okay? So you want just a little bit. If you squeeze it too hard, it won't, you won't be able to bite into it. So you roll it here with your thumb, with your fingers, and your thumb kind of pats it down, right? And that's about it. So we're going to take each piece here. Traditionally, we'd take a smear of wasabi on the bottom, make a rectangle box. You flip it over as fast as you can. Okay, you lift, put it back on your left hand. You form the fish around the rice. The faster you do it, the fish won't warm up, right? So we, we play with the rice here for as long as you want, three and a half, four and a half days. But as soon as you pick up your fish, your netta, as fast as you can. Make a little rectangle box, you flip it over. Put it back down your left hand, form the fish around the rice. Okay, do two more sets here. So you just make these little rice balls ahead of time. Right, just kind of go here, flip it over. So you take it, make your rectangle box, and you flip it over, and down your left hand. All right, one more. So not too much water; that won't stick on this one. Okay, so right here, flip it over, 
And the way you eat this is put a smear wasabi on top, dip it upside down in your soy sauce, and eat it upside down so that the fish is on your tongue and not the rice. Okay? So that's your nigiri. It's really nice here. All right? And then your ne tekamaki. So a little bit of water on your knife. We'll cut them both together. So we go right in half. We cut them into six pieces. So we can go a third, a third is one roll, and a third, and a third is the second roll. All right, so you get that. One plate. So you take each piece here. You can kind of keep one down, one up, like that. Get a nice look. Or if you get it done right, you can kind of put them all up. It should be all one level there. It looks something like that. All right? So you get your sashimi here with no rice, your nigiri sushi with rice, your tekamaki, which is a tuna roll, very traditional, your poke there with cube tuna, and you got your, all your tuna fillets here. Thank you very much to Mike Yoto, Sweetwater Road. Thank you, Bessa San Diego. Have a great day. That was fascinating. I love watching this uh, food be made because it's so artistic. So I want to welcome everybody. Uh, I want you to all welcome Jeff Roberto from Sushi on the <laughs> Hey, how are you doing? Good to nice see, to you, see again. you again. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you like that, huh? You're hungry? Yeah, totally hungry. And it, it's, <laughs> it's so, it's fascinating too. And it's something that you don't think about that you just don't have to have rolls at your party, that there's such yeah. versatility with, with all that comes with sushi, you yeah, know? Very much, very much. And then it looks different, right? A little textures, a little kind of just, uh, just different styles. So it kind of goes uh, really nice. Yeah, and it just, it addresses the plate itself. You don't really very need much, much so. more in the decor. So you yeah, put yeah. out a nice sushi bar. It's, it's beautiful. Edible art. Edible art. Absolutely out of art. So, and, and, um, and just also just watching there too, that, you know, the, the poke bowl, it's so on trend right now. And the yeah. thing is that you guys can bring that into a party setting that, which is pretty, Very much so. yeah, it's pretty spectacular. I think the, the raw fish, the sashimi side, the poke, I think will, especially here in the West coast, everyone's so healthy. Uh, they'll be here for a while. So, uh, it's so yeah. good. It's so big with all the tuna they're catching out there right now. Absolutely. It's one of those things that I always like look for. If it's on like the menu, I'm like, oh, we'll do the poke bowl because I know that I'm going to be full when I go home. <laughs> like, go. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So just a few questions for you. Just kind of okay. so, um, if people are going to want to, you guys can always back up this video, rewatch all of these tutorials um, and, you know, play with this yourself at home. This is a really it's a great activity for you to do at home with your kids. And so if they were doing this, where, where exactly should they go to get their sushi? So to get the fish, yeah, yeah go, fish. go to your yeah your local grocery stores might carry sashimi grade, but definitely there your Japanese markets in uh, Kearney Mesa here in San Diego, and we have a uh, our own grocery store uh, in National City that we have the fresh fish. Or you go to like uh, Kelly Offshore or Portland with Seafood, or the Tuna Harbor on uh, the weekends are good. But you gotta know your fishmonger because just just because it's raw doesn't mean you can eat it raw. So be careful. You know if it smells a little bit, you want to cook it. Uh, and that's what's the tricky part with some of these local grocery stores. They don't, they don't, that's not one of their fortes of keeping sashimi grade fish on their shelf. So uh, these Japanese markets and uh, the fish markers will definitely keep it fresh for you. Absolutely. So just to be safe and just make sure that you're consuming yeah. something that is brand new. Yeah, if it has new. any smell to it, just cook it. That's, yeah. Because otherwise, yeah, the, the pokey and all that stuff. I mean, you can buy, you know, your fish can go fishing, you know, but a week later he gives you that fish. Doesn't necessarily mean it's still fresh. So Exactly. Uh, Definitely. So, yeah. So, and, and then with that too, is when you go to, um, I know that in, in San Diego, we can always go to your store and, and the other Thank examples you. that you just gave. But um, when, when, if you were going to be going to a Japanese market, will they actually do the cuts for you, the ones that you did? Or, or is that something they'll just give you the big piece? Some will, yeah. So the bigger the piece, the cheaper per pound it is, right? So when you get to mm -hmm. a filet, that's going to be like 20 to $30 a pound depending on where you go. But if you can get the whole fish, like if a fisherman gives it to you, you can probably buy it for like $10 a pound. You just got to know how to fillet the fish right. Um, but it just depends on what you need. And here at the store, we'll do, we'll take care of our customers here. We'll break it down. It doesn't take us that long to do it. So absolutely. Uh, some of those places, you know, yeah, you got to be careful. So um, 
Okay, so you mentioned briefly in the beginning there, you know, when you were doing the cuts and that certain um, cuts you were putting aside for spicy tuna specifically, what, what makes it spicy? What, what is that? So simple. <laughs> it's, we want to use our spice, right? We all like our favorite spice, but the, the customers tell you it's just sriracha. It's so simple and it's, and it's not the best spice, but everyone wants it. It got so big and uh, mm -hmm. you got to go with what the customers want, right? So uh, when we do our own rolls, we make uh, other spices with it. But, you know, 349 a, a bottle, I'll take that any day. Uh, absolutely. I'm the person who likes to, I, I, I like heat in, in my food. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a spicy tuna person who will get that. <laughs> Definitely. And that's what it started. So you know, back in the day, so I've been doing this since 87. So in the eighties, it was uh, California when it came out first. And then, and then fortunately with Mexico uh, below us, it, um, uh, the spice came out, right? So everyone started doing, so the spicy tuna was kind of the, the non second non-traditional roll that kind of came out before uh -huh. the rainbow roll and the trim tempura and all that. So so number two is the, the big seller in uh, most sushi bars as well right now. Absolutely. So if um, if somebody was looking to uh, come to you guys and they wanted to do rolls for an event, about how many pieces do you suggest per person? I would say if it's an appetizer and if you have you know food afterwards, I would do four to six or just like one roll per person. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a way to get with it. But then I tell people it's so hard to, it, you'll, you'll never, it's you'll never, uh, how can I put it? You can never order too much sushi. Someone will eat it, right? I mean, you can order uh -huh. a thousand pieces for ten people, and they'll they'll figure a way to eat it. So, uh, get enough for what you want to start with, and then go from from there. It's so it's so crazy. Absolutely. I remember when I actually I worked for a spa back a long time ago, and um, we used to do events, special events, and and we would bring in sushi on like the big massage oh, days, right. and. Um, I remember that everybody would go home with like a to go because that's what they wanted. Like all the clients who we were schmoozing, so they would have their own. And then all the massage therapists at the end would just hoard over the table. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's a hot There'll item. No leftovers. None of it goes in the trash. You know, someone will eat it. <laughs> Absolutely. Everybody. I'm one of those people. Like, get there me a go. pair. Of, yeah, give me a pair of sticks. Let's go. So, <laughs> so thank you so much again for joining us today. We got to do ahi tuna four ways. Make sure that you guys like this video, check out Jeff Roberto over at Sushi on a Roll. You guys can see that uh, Instagram handle and his website going flashing down below. You can also find his store, Kyoto. Uh, and so thank you guys so much for tuning in. You can also find all of us over on the bestofsandiego.com website uh, where you can find Jeff and a lot of our other vendors. So we're going to take you out right now. Let's just do a real quick quiz. Check this out. I hope you guys got that one, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Thanks so much again for tuning in for Bessa San Diego's Mitz TV. I'm D'Angelo with Balada Entertainment, and this show has been run by SoCal Greenscreen. Thanks so much.